What's up everybody? I'm about to go into UPS and grab a package, but I wanted to film this video because uh, I ran an experiment this morning sublingually uh, dosing a draphanil. So I was thinking like, is this even going to work, right? Because, you know, the idea with a draphanil is that it converts to modafinil in your liver and that modafinil is, is what's psychoactive and cognitively enhancing and wakefulness promoting. Is a draphanil still going to be that way? Uh, and, the, and, and the answer is yes, it, it still is. So probably the case is that a draphanil does not, you know, a draphanil maintains uh, effects on the nervous system uh, in a similar way to modafinil. It's just not fully modafinil because it didn't get converted, you know, in, into modafinil in, in the first pass of the liver, but still has all the psychoactive effects. So it probably still works on GABA in an inhibitory way in certain regions of the brain, like modafinil does, and it probably works on the catecholamines, rising, raising the catecholamines. Uh, like a draphanil does after it gets converted to modafinil and like modafinil does. So it, it maintains its ability to be wakefulness uh, promoting, which is uh, really awesome. Here's what I dosed. I dosed uh, 40 milligrams first because I was like, well, if 150 milligrams of a draphanil is equivalent to 50 milligrams of modafinil, via dividing that your draphanil dose by three to get your targeted quantity of modafinil via the conversion rate, then I should take 150 milligrams of this, but maybe since it's sublingual, I should take slightly less. But then I was like, well, wait a minute. If it's not converting to modafinil, how do we even know that that conversion formula is even applicable? It might not even be. So I was kind of like, I have to wing this here. And so I did, and you should really never wing dosages with nootropics, but if you are going to do it and you sort of feel like you're in accord and you have to do that, dose low. So that's what I did. I started super low, 40 milligrams sublingually. 10 minutes later, I felt it. It started to turn on 15, 20 minutes later. I was like, okay, this is, this is interesting, but it's not substantial. Maybe I can go a little higher. I dosed an extra 40 milligrams, a total of 80 milligrams of a draphanil. And that, my friends, was my sweet spot. So I don't even know what the conversion would be to modafinil or sort of what that really is because we're doing it sublingually. So it hits you a lot quicker, you know, and it's a lot more pronounced. But suffice it to say, a mere 80 milligrams of a draphanil was powerful for me. I mean, here I am an hour and a half later, I'm still feeling it. It actually still feels like it's intensifying, which is super odd. And uh, I gotta say, so far I'm having a really, really good experience. You know, I, again, with the, the athanils, I don't really ever notice substantial verbal fluency benefits and working memory benefits. I notice slight benefits in those areas, but it's more just wakefulness promoting, energy promoting, I'm motivated to do things. I've got energy. I feel like I slept 25 hours. You know, I feel like I slept 72 hours. Like, it's, you know, it's crazy. I'm like awake and my brain is functioning uh, really well. So if you're thinking about sublingually dosing a draphanil, go for it. Start at 40 milligrams, go to 80 thereafter and uh, see where you're at. Another tip or another reason this might be useful is because the aphanils and a lot of the acidic uh, nootropic compounds like acetyl L-carnitine, for example, are notoriously bad on people with gut problems. If you've got acid reflux or some sort of gut issue, sublingual dosing completely passes the, the compound and go passing through your intestines and possibly exacerbating that condition. So um, that is pretty useful for those of you who have uh, gut conditions and need to cut out gut irritants. And if you just don't want to have a draphanil pass through your liver and convert to, to modafinil, it's still psychoactive and still effective in this way. I just would suggest not dosing high because you might run into side effects like anxiety or something like that, which is what I see uh, people often doing thinking they can dose high on the aphanils, which is uh, probably not a you know, great idea, at least to start. you got to find where your sweet spot is at. Less is always more. Start low and then work your way up. But hey, if you're thinking about sublingually dosing a draphanil, it works. I did it at 80 milligrams this morning, and it's been like I'm on fire, and it's awesome. If you've not tried the Cortex Nootropic stack, we built a stack with uridine monophosphate and CDP choline, artichoke extract, and bacopa monnieri. We actually set out to make a stack that was subjectively uh, subjectively no noticeable to people. You know, uh, people commonly complain about pre-made stacks in a way that's like, uh, they, they don't work for me or they, they, they subtly work or they, you know, I didn't really feel anything from it. And that's kind of the common complaint with a lot of the pre-made nootropic products out there. And we wanted to make a stack that was the, the complete opposite of that, that there was no question in your mind that this is improving brain function and that you're subjectively getting a feel from this nootropic. And no lie, 90% of people that take it say that that exact same thing. So secure a bottle at livecortex.com of what's being called the only pre-made nootropic stack that works. And hey, if you're thinking about sublingually dosing a draphanil, it worked for me.